This is Sunday, December 20th. I'm here with Persephilia. We are still in the comfort of our home and we are about to leave to go see Star Wars The Force Awakens. Will we be disappointed again? We don't know yet. Persephilia, what are you expecting from Star Wars The Force Awakens? I've tried um, not to expect too much, um, just not to be disappointed. I'm hoping to be very happy at the end and to enjoy myself watching the movie. You've been offline for several days? Yes. I didn't want to spoil, get any spoilers. Just having a picture of having someone saying that they find it really good or not good. I just didn't want to have that at all. I want just want to go there unspoiled. Well, oh, I kept being online, but thanks to all the fans out there who managed to respected. The people were not lucky enough to see it on the premiere night and managed to not to spoil anything to me. Thank you all Star Wars fans out there. I don't know what to expect. This is the last evening of my life out of the expanded universe. No more Mara Jade, no more Amiral Throne soon. We'll find out about Kylo Ren you're already telling me too much now. <laughs> yeah, but none of that is relevant to the movie. It's okay. stuff which will be washed away in the waves of the sea. That's everything that's come before that hasn't wasn't the first films is now known as Star Wars Legends. Okay. Well, we'll see. We we can go further in that subject later. But let first thing first. Like James Bond, what was your first experience of of Star Wars, if you remember it? I watched the film uh, the films on on TV and when they first came out, and I really enjoyed them. I think it was like basically like Return of the Jedi as a five year old kid. You see an Ewok on TV, and as you're a five year old, it reminds you of your teddy bear. So you're like ah. It's so exciting. But um, as actually I've gotten older... Flesh-eating teddy bear. It, yeah. <laughs> Flesh-eating teddy bear. What? <laughs> they ate those Tom Troopers. They, they were about to eat the good guys. <laughs> it's dinner. Yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> what, about, um, what about you, Gary? Do you remember... What was it like as a child, Star Wars? I listened to the cassette. My brother put it on. Oh, me too. I had a video. I was about to talk about that. A little cassette player, and you know the whole, the, the, you know the New Hope. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You were talking about audio cassette? Yeah, the, oh, yeah, cassette, audio, you know, audio, the yeah. fashion cassette yeah, players. Not, not VHS tape. No, no, right? no, it was absolute cassette. Yeah. So all, Did you have you a know, book? You would flip the pages. No, the they, they put it on, so I'd go to bed instead of reading this story. Like you just please. Go in a dark room, be quiet for the night. We'll put <laughs> That's pretty much my childhood, to be well, honest. Loving family there. Yeah, yeah totally. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, they were a good family, to be fair. So anyway, um, so that they had the cassette, and um, I think it was after listening to it, I absolutely loved it and fell in love with the whole story of it, like most kids do. And um, I think it was like, I can't remember which one it was, but... It was a, a video I saw in, in the rental store, and I saw a big green guy on it, and go, "What? Oh, no, see, I know that's Jerry do now." I go, "Oh, I want to watch it. It's got this big green guy in it." And um, I think, yeah, so that's where it started for me. And then obviously I watched them all in the wrong order completely. Yeah, the, that's a, that's the exciting thing I find about the the original one is that well, first of all, it's talking like an old man, but it's not the generation. I mean. I saw first the, on the VHS tape the, the New Hope, which in French was just not even called a New Hope. It what was just, is it called? Uh, it's called like, Star Wars, so like, La Guerre des Étoiles, okay. which is the opposite because it would be Star's War. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but it's I saw, I saw a New Hope in VHS tape. I had a flip book with a vinyl disc 
telling the story and you hear R2D2 and you need to flip the pages of Return of the Jedi. Mm. So Bef- like annoyed, yeah, I had a hard. jigsaw puzzle of Return of the Jedi, but I didn't see it. And I was very confused because you had this movie, it's called Episode 4. I knew there were others. Well, it, it wasn't... Uh, it yeah. took, but you could not access videos like you can <sighs> today. You, you you would have, especially when you are a kid, uh, very young, you just watch whatever they, they, they brought you and they... they they, they were probably video club, but I, I was too young to know about them. So I saw A New Hope a thousand of times, and finally I saw Return of the Jedi I knew of because of my vinyl thing, which was referring things in Empire Strikes Back, which I didn't know what it was. And who was the last one I saw was Empire Strikes Back. But everything in disorder, and even more confused by the fact that there were two Ewoks movies, so I would see commercial about yeah. that, but I never saw them, but... I thought at the time that episode one, two, and three already already existed. When when were you talking about this, and when did you see that? Nineteen eighty, I guess three to nineteen eighty seven or eight. Because they didn't they didn't name them episode four then. I didn't think. I thought it was much later. I remember. Well, I it, was, it was all they knew was New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return mm-hmm. of the Jedi. When they did the the re re, re digitalizing of them, I think that was them actually getting the money to actually see whether or not it was worthwhile to actually... You mean the special editions? Special editions, yeah. No, it, I think it, it was it, episode four before that. But to be honest, as a child, answer. the whole experience yeah. was very confusing, but all the more exciting yeah. about it, because that's what I love about Star Wars, is this idea that you refer to things which you don't see. It's about... And then you read the books, etc., and you find out about them, but for each thing you find out about them, there's more mystery going on. Mm. The world seems much bigger than the little portion you, you see. We, we are totally out of structure. <laughs> what I, I wrote, continuing on that, the, this idea of you got this expanded universe since it was the, the, mm. the official term. The, and that's what I really disliked about the prequel is that all this stuff, which instead of showing you more of the universe, it was sort of closing it by answering questions. You didn't really need an answer to it. Was just oh, so he comes there because that's it. What do you mean in the, the, what, in, first three films? Yeah, where well, he puts it one, two, and three. In... Well, that, that well, it, oh, well, it goes back all in history there because George Lucas basically he thought that he was going to be doing that. So when the expanded universe, as it is, started being created, George Lucas closed the doors around from the New Hope back. I think about twenty years. And he made specific things that he said that no player could actually do. Don't write any stories regarding about Darth Vader and about Luke and Leia and where they come from and stuff like that. Everything else was you had to go to George Lucas's mm. office and actually ask if you could include something. And then they would actually see it off. But he'd actually did a verbatim, no, don't to even bother everything. writing any story about this. No matter how good it is, it's not going to get through. Because he'd already seen that I'm going to be doing this. Yeah, I, I'm... I get the point about him securing that, but at yeah. the same time, I just rewatch a new one, and it doesn't fly in the sense of if he already knew when he did that what was before. No, he didn't. Uh, yeah, because he was, he, was, he, was he, he wrote that story in college. Did, you just watch a new hope and everything which is said in it by characters like Kenobi don't make any sense with any of the prequels. Script wise, it doesn't make any sense. Everything he says is senseless compared to, to the movies. Thinking about him, going through, I don't even remember having droids ever. So I don't even remember those two droids created by my friend who was underage, which has been mine for ages, the two of them. <laughs> and I saw them, yeah. so like, yeah, you it doesn't, doesn't I, work. I think, I think you know, there's been lots of arguments over to what it could be. Okay, I'm going to cut there, because otherwise you're going to go for ages yeah. on, on, on this.
Thank you. Jumping straight into role playing games. Okay, I got one system for me. That's the only one I played, and I'm willing to try the latest one. But it would be very difficult to move out of the West End games D6 system. Okay, that was my very first role playing game. I got a book here. It's in French. Uh, second edition Star Wars: Le Jeu de Rôle de la Guerre des Étoiles. I didn't know what was a role playing game when I got it. I saw it in a magazine. I asked it for Christmas. Received it. I read it. Didn't get at all <laughs> what it was. I was really confused by. This. I was like, is there a board? What's going on? You were in the James Bond episode. You mentioned Gary about your first child uh, experience in role playing. We we played just me and my best friend on a kitchen table with with nothing, playing five minutes games. That's the most we did before I actually found out about other players. Gary, have you ever played to any Star Wars role playing games? I played more. <laughs> to be honest, no. Uh, all okay. That's great. I mean, I'm actually more of a a big fan of the newest one. Seems good. It is. I mean, I I like the, f- the fact that I mean, I'm James more an expert on the newer system than than I am. Uh, I had the pleasure of him as a GM for this. Not stuck behind a door though. It's it's good because it's a dramatic system. It's well, I think if you're playing a hero, you need to be you need to have that dramaticness to it. And the new dice system, which they did do many years ago. They're, brought them back forward, mm-hmm. the new dice works, it's more fluid for the GM to work with, more easy to understand with the players. So I kind of like that one compared to like D20 version. Yeah, the D20 I was never attracted by the idea of playing a level 5 Wookiee or this sort of thing. That that just felt really weird. It's just easy for people to understand because when you've got like a D&D player, you know, you want to go, hey, I like D&D the mechanics of the system so maybe I'd like to do this in a Star Wars universe so it sort of fit for them that seemed very I don't know if it's British or so but for me it's very American oriented in the sense that you come with the mindset that people know role playing games through Dungeons and Dragons that was not my case I went through this one and then I played other games and Dungeons and Dragons was one of the latest I ever played played like six games including Legends of the Five Rings or Vampire before playing Dungeon and Dragon, because in France and Belgium, I think Dungeon and Dragons proportionally is much less popular than it is here. So when you saw that, okay, Dungeon and Dragons applied to Star Wars, that was really, yeah, a lot of people were really dubious about the, the whole concept. Yeah, I think it was more the license agreement that they had at the time. It was easier to buy that license agreement. There was a big following on the, you know, the D&D 3.5. So yeah, that's what I think. Everything was D20 then. I even yeah. remember so Legends of the Five Rings, D20, and I was like, yeah, no, thank you very much. I'll keep my. It's a new popular thing, so everyone was yeah. trying to move on to it. It was like the new GURPS, but with a big brand yeah. behind it. There's, there's some games that I've played that you, you've got literally three versions of the rules in the book. I mean, Eden, all flesh must be eaten, for example. You have a D20 version, you have the Eden version in there, and then you have another system in there. So you like, have all these systems to pick from. And it's just like, oh, let's see which one's a popular one for people to go for. If you bear with me a couple of moments, I like to, <laughs> I like, I like to tell your listeners a little bit of the history of it all. Because you're a diehard D6 fan. Yeah. Um, and that's when it came out. And hopefully this will basically bring everything to a close, you know, including Force Awakens. Yeah, good. Everything yeah. like this. So everyone knows that Star Wars big, all starts off 1977. No one, think, no one had ever seen anything like it like that before. Certain role players at the time basically came around and saw it and they go, wow, what a great thing. Let's actually create a, a role play game about this, but we can't actually call it Star Wars because we don't have a license. Okay. So they invented the Traveller system. Really? Oh, which is very popular around here, but I had never heard yeah, of Yeah, so that was, they invented Traveller and yeah, that's when they basically started it to get up the whole, the whole thing running off there. Now, it actually comes back down to Ghostbusters. What? Ghostbusters. And the role-playing game. Yeah. Well, no, go to the film. Then people okay. want to do the role-playing okay. game. They invented the uh, Ghostbusters role-playing game around this. And they invented a custom dice system, which they actually coined the word dice pool, because before then it was just one dice roll, and uh-huh. that was it. And then with, the, with this new system, you had a multitude of dices that you would roll. Dice pool was coined... In the start so uh, in the Ghostbusters. D20 like that. Yeah. So uh, they coined it. Um, in Ghostbusters, um, it was D6 custom system. They invented the D6 system. And what they did is basically they created a lot of elements to it that actually fleshed it out. But it was so good that it actually won best role play game 
1986. In then, they actually go, right, this is really great. Well, they had this, they had the, a ghost dice there, which is basically an extra dice that basically showed that if you rolled it high, basically something bad had happened to you. And they also had this thing called brownie points in there, which you could basically upgrade it, give yourself extra bad dice or do extra things. Back in the 1980s, they'd already invented a system where you could actually have this to and fro between the GM and the player. Uh huh, okay. That's, that's fascinating, really. So that's what they had. And then moved on from there, they then basically went on to the, the D6 system. Now, one of the guys who actually worked on Ghostbusters, Mark uh, Rain Hagen, he then went on to later to develop World of Darkness. So we'll come back to him later. <laughs> but here's one, one way in which he goes. The West End Games one, that was the next year out. They made Star Wars out there. And that one, best role-playing game, 1987. Because he used that system and they moved on to it. The thing was, though, they didn't have any of this lore. All they had was like you know, the films. They didn't actually explain anything, like you said. Uh-huh. They just go. They mentioned something in passing, and they're like, well, "What do we do?" So that's why West End Games actually produced 140 books, source books of adventures, to actually explain this world and actually build it up. Which is, I mean, that's the sort of things that so, I've been so many, collecting, and yeah. uh, they did so many of them. And they, and again, that's how I got into that. I was really a big fan of Star Wars, and again, I was into you know this law. I have all the art of Star Wars books, etc. And when I found out about the role-playing game, I was all in for that because I had technical books. All these books were describing these places, these characters, these ships yeah. and details, who manufactured them, and etc. You would have layout of uh, blasters and uh, uh, the, the, the way... You got one book describing all the everything, all the rebellion is working. One book describing all the bureaucracy of the empire. It creates this, this uh, world that he draws you in. And so, so much so that there, that there were so, the West End Games books were so authoritative on it. George Lu- uh, Lucastic uh, Film Limited actually gave a set of the books to Timothy Zahn and said, this is your source material for writing the books of the Thorn trilogy. Yeah, the, uh, and they the were, Empire. they were George Lucas's, right, this is going to be the next three films we're going to do. Uh huh. But that never happened. But that's what he did. So he went away and read those and then actually used the elements of that into there. So in, in part, the creator of the expanded universe was the D6 system. And that then basically fed back into itself. But then, they, they, unfortunately, they, they then moved on to the, the D20 system mm-hmm. with Wizards of the Coast and they took that up. They, some people liked it. Quite a lot of people didn't. But they did do something really good. They then moved from that and moved into the Saga Edition which I've actually heard a lot of people actually said they actually really enjoyed. The Sega edition. Saga right? edition, 2007, they actually took the elements of the D6 and tried some of the elements of the D6 version. They felt that they weren't capturing as well as they could. Just revamped it. First. Revamped it, and they yeah. revamped their system. Made it a lot more, more similar, simplified. And actually, in part, it's kind of halfway between D&D 3.5 and D&D 4. Okay. So they have actually did something really well there. Um, but... Everything sort of, you know, everyone has their own little thing. You know, again, the HSMC is very good. I'm just being on purpose a stick in the mud. I, no, I'd be very keen to, to very, play it. Very popular system at the moment. It's definitely yeah, one but of the biggest talk out there. We need to do battle games, uh, X-Wing. It's, it's very, very similar sort of system with the dice. See the, the fantasy flight game uh, X-Wing. There's so much love put in all of these tiny the quality, little... The quality, the quality of those is, figures. When I, you... know, I see a lot of figures. In, in, in my job, I see a lot of figures. And they have one of the highest quality figures that you will see. And when you compare that to the, the Star Trek games, which is very similar, the, 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 the ships are terrible. The scale is not concept. working. It's so sad. But no, yeah, fantasy flight, you can buy them just just in your on your on your shelf. It's it's beautiful. I used to be a hobbyist and paint things, and when you see things like that, to some extent I'm like, ah, uh, I'm not reaching that's, that level of quality that's myself. Interesting you say that because nowadays, at least I find that. So I love to do to do painting when I'm younger. Now when we get figures, we go, oh, I haven't got time to do the painting. Yeah. I just want to get the thing and have it already done. And it's like you said, they're already done. They're already painted. They're already good quality of them, so you don't need to do anything. So, yeah, you, maybe you want some alternate schemes because you want that specific yeah, one, but otherwise they're, they're really good uh, uh, as they are. Going back to the system, uh, James. Oh yeah, yeah. Then moving on from all that, they, they actually then when Fantasy Fight Games actually uh, purchased uh, the license for it, 
they actually had some of those writers um, who had done the previous games and looked at, for example, the nice easy system of dots on the page. They didn't have to look up her numbers mm -hmm. from the World of Darkness system. Um, and took all the best elements they could try and actually get from the stuff they'd done before with going to the dramatic dice they used in Warhammer, used that and developed on it more. They'd taken all the lore and all the simple guys and basically created a game where it was a lot more simplified version of the rules that actually to make it flow a lot more. So and, and Fantasy Flight Games of Star Wars is a combination of 40 years uh, all forms of role playing put together and actually worked on the best the best area. And I really enjoy it because one of the things it does do is if no one knows what the fact they, they've done with their dramatic dice is you have good dice and you've got bad dice. And the better you are at something you get a dice that has more sides to it, so hence more chance to do mm -hmm. something on. But because they actually cancel on these good dice and bad dice, cancel each other out, you can succeed, you can fail. They also have advantages and disadvantages. So basically, something good could happen, but you fail. Yeah, I really like what I read about it, a system where, which encourages you to build upon what's going on. Like, okay, to go back to your uh, no infamous example of the door, you, you throw dice to open a door. You might succeed to open the door, but because that, and I don't know the specific, this dice says that there's a little complication. Maybe a, you open the door, but an alarm yeah. Goes off. So the story continues and success failure is, it's not something as strict as something which is building upon a situation. I think that it really works well with the Star Wars system, looking at the films. I mean, take the classic moment. Luke and Leia are running away from the stormtroopers. They, they basically, she goes like, I can get across there and Luke gets his gun and shoots the, the, the control panel. The, Congratulations, you've successfully shot it, but you've got a threat on there. The door closes, well done. But the ramp you were going to be walking across there starts retracting and you go, ah. It basically, it gives them more flavour. And you see it so many times through actually the Star Wars films that it... You just reminded me of a really good scene. It gives, it gives these uh, so much more flavour to the games. Like, for example, classic moment, same film. Han is chasing after two stormtroopers. Runs into a hangar. It was two stormtroopers. Now he sees a whole battalion of them. Turns around, runs the other way. <laughs> It's really okay, comical. You are, and... uh, I'm going to let you, Gary, yeah. tell your story. But first, first I'm going to nitpick on this one. The movie I saw yesterday, Jan runs after four yeah. stormtroopers, which he bluffed into thinking that he was more than one guy. The guy arrives at the dead end. They are forced to turn around. There's not hundreds of them. There's just four or five. Oh, okay. So there never were more. So not, let's, you hand shot first. Hand shot first. <laughs> yeah, hand shot first. <laughs> Gary. So that special, so you asked me earlier about a, a scene and all that, and I just rem remembered one based on what James just said. You remember it. <laughs> I remember one now, you see. So, well, because it's kind of rare when I do play. Uh, so I was playing a, an evil sort of Sith Lord, uh -huh. but I designed my character to be you, a You real did say Ewok Sith Lord? Evil Sith Okay. Sif. Not a new one. Not new one. No, <laughs> not a, a teddy bear. Good you got it. I'm off. This would be a GM's Sif. worst nightmare. Ewok, that'd be awesome. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, no, I was playing and I put all my character traits into social. So that's, that's what I call it, social monster is what I called them. And so I could do everything social. One of my friends was playing a big robotic sort of character. And so he put all these in physical. So I guess we're being a bit of a munchkins, really, <laughs> both of us together. And uh, we and we were just absolutely obliterating the system. Were you called Min and your friend Max then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. We don't often do it, but we did do it in this that, one. Min, that's a good name for a Sith Min Lord. Max, yeah. For a Sith, Darth Min. Darth Min. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you're saying about the, the translation of it in France? Yeah. Basically, uh, yeah, it was just basically known as Le Star Wars. Le Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. But the funny thing, yeah, but because it, the Dark Vader is becomes Dark Vador. Dark, Vador. Yeah, Vador. Yeah, yeah, because it was, and, it, it, it finished it, so I don't think Darth Vader actually means Dark Father. In Dutch, yeah. So it's, 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 it, yeah. it's three words when you read the Dutch subtitles of it, it's like, it's retarded, like, what? Vader is my Vader? <laughs> 
It's no surprise for them. Then, <laughs> it's it's like, that feel. But they changed uh, its name, I think. When they dark Vader with a O, uh, yeah. and it's dark. It's not Darth. It's dark. Uh, yeah. And a little story. Uh, in the first movie, they changed the name of pretty much everyone to match the lips. And when they did Empire Strike Back, they reverted back to the original names, like. R2-D2 is D2, D2, R2, D2, R2 in French. C3PO is Z6PO for really weird reason. Anger 94 becomes A, A Anger 49. There's a lot of weird ins- inconsistencies, uh, like, like they translated, they translated Chewbacca in Chictaba, so chewing tobacco, so they translated that. Weird French thing. Gary, your story. <laughs> it's completely gone on West End. Oh no! <laughs> Destroyed! Sith. Um, it, Sith. It, yes, it was the, uh, Sith Max, wasn't it? Called Sith Min. Min. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, we were just charging along a corridor trying to escape from some stormtroopers. And, um, believe it or not, they rebelled against us. They were meant to be on our side. <laughs> we went down to the, we went down to the, uh, base to sort out the problem of them rebelling against us. <laughs> um, it just seems like you were really talented. So I was the uh, almost like the, the diplomatic sort of person to get the people back on our side, and um, it didn't go very well at all. We just were bodging. So when James was saying about getting those critical failures, I was getting critical failures on everything. I absolutely built my character good at social, completely failed at everything on social, and then I was literally running away from the stormtroopers being shot at, and I had to jump. One of the, the platform, just as James described it, started retracting in. And, uh, I thought, oh, I've got no chance of doing that. And, <laughs> I, 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 and I succeeded. It was like everything physical I was succeeding at and everything social I was failing at. In reverse to your complete life. reverse and how I built the character. But it was just because it was absolutely luck of the dice. Because it was all the drama, drama points to it all that was going through the dice. You got the D6 stories to show that you can have Fun stories in the old day six mm. system. It was, it did not happen to me, but, uh, it was one of the story we tell and we tell with my friends. Two people in a freighter escaping a station about to explode. So they're in this big tube to get out of the station. There's a traffic jam there because everybody is trying to, to get out of there. They are behind the controls of the ship. Uh, and one of them is piloting, uh, the pilot. And the other one says, wait a minute. I'm going to try something. He sits at the control, roll his dice, entire critical failure. The ship heads straight into the wall of the, the tube. Then my other friend, who can be a crazy uh, critical succeeder, he rolled three rolls in uh, uh, protection against hull damage, and he critically succeeded all of them. So the result was, in a movie, there would be, wait a minute, I'm going to try something, turning your ship towards the wall. And... <laughs> Piercing through uh, several layers of the station and ending up outside the station like a champion. <laughs> Mr. Vader would like to see you in his office. The computer says you're a junkie. You're fired. <laughs>
I don't know in Edge, but in Western games, there, there's a number of sort of famous scenarios and, and campaign. Uh, my favorite one is Dark Strider. D6 system, again, set after the event of Return of the Jedi. It sort of have, why well, it was way before that time, uh, Battlestar Galactica, the new one, the vibe, because you are, you're on a Corellian corvette transformed to be a ship carrier at the same time as you got X-Wings and other ships in the Corellian corvette, and you're heading into unknown space, chasing a, a moth who used to rule the place, who left with all the maps, so you, you don't have precise knowledge of what, what planets you're heading to, and you, you have to catch up with this guy. He's got some weird technology called Dark Strider you don't know anything about. You end up on planet at the same time you represent the New Republic. You're supposed to be diplomatic. Your captain is gone also. So mm -hmm. you, you start and your crew is basically people who got out of the jail of the moth <laughs> and you recruiting them because there were no other jobs and they're all on your ship. So it's like, Battlestar Galactica in the world of Star Wars, but with the crew of Oz, the HBO show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really tough. The funny thing is that you play three characters. So it's quite heavy. That's my retirement mm. plan. I want to be in a pension home with uh, other role playing to play that game. You play a pre generated character, which is from the commanding officers. Then you have a pre gen, which is mid rank. And then you got a really basic character, like which you create yourself, and you play stories okay. at the different level at the same time. And it's really heavy, requires really a lot of time, but it's, it's actually very exciting, I find. This one you've mentioned there has actually reminded me of a, a really good story there, one of the adventures. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of the uh, pre-written adventures in any form of role play game, mm -hmm. because I, I always find that they're sometimes they're a bit too narrow that you really have to read them again and again and again because sometimes players will want to go off on a tangent or, you know, you don't really know what a little something someone's done back at the start and then has drastic effects in the future. But the one that I would really recommend for anyone wanting to play this, no matter how powerful your gamers are, is one that comes with the Age of Rebellion book. Uh-huh. The, uh, the box set. It's called Dead in the Water. It is an excellent game. And... Uh, for any GM to actually play for their players. You can play around with the, the, the stats of the what they're going up against, but the premise of it is the players are asked to basically go away, get a load of droids, comes to a ship, they're on the ship, they turn out to actually all be assassin droids. Well, so you've got 10,000 assassin droids on a ship. The whole ship is starting to fail. It comes out of hyperspace in, in the eye of a... Wormhole. No, not in eye. Oh, sorry, with a black hole. In the, in the distance. So that was got, a crab day. <laughs> yeah, that's a crab day. You basically, so you, you, the players have got to go around and like re, re turn on the engines on, um, stop the droids from calling for reinforcements, call reinforcements, all these different things. And there's so many great little points to it that they, they go, people are moved to. It. There's so many things going on. The players have only got so much time that they can actually do in. That'd be kind of good for a, to run out of con, that sort of game. It, it? Either way, it took quite a long time. There's a lot of jump into an area and you've got a bit of a fire. Yeah. Jump into another area, you've got a bit of a fire. But the, yeah. the, the, the options they actually give you is like one of the, my favourite points is when they, I was reading this on the book as a little GM, you know, like a little smirk behind Is it me. a spoiler? So should people jump a few uh, seconds ahead? Yeah, I'll throw it. Well, okay. the whole, the, the, I've already given you a spoiler with regards to the fact that the, the, the yeah. because otherwise it wouldn't make much sense. But this is a spoiler for those people actually well, if they want to. Skip on for the next point for the next few it, 10 seconds. So it's like, it is basically you get to one of the areas and you can either inspire the crew to basically fight on your side and you know overthrow the droid oppressors, or you can tell them to abandon ship. I gave the choice to the my players. I went, oh, yeah. after they're talking, they went, let's abandon ship. I was like, right, I'm going to read out what would have happened. Okay, the, the droids you normally would go up to would be severely defeated uh, or severely reduced. But the crew is, a, you know, decimated. <laughs> You've just basically slaughtered the crew by encouraging them to go up with pistols against droids. So that, that would have been, you know, if that had happened, the look on their faces would have been, oh my god, what have we done? It's, it actually reminds me of a, another adventure, again, D6. I think it's, I guess in, in English it would be Falling Star, which starts with your characters being in jail on a 
Star Destroyer and you woken up, the doors are ajar, they're open and what happens is that the, the ship is falling apart so the whole story is you of getting out of the ship before it explodes and along the way you find out about the captain that is about to set it to, to explode at the best moment to kill the rebel ships Crazy. who are currently attacking the, the ship and uh, so it's all about uh, you find that room uh, there's duct falling apart you have to jump it's quite funny because it's kind of you're in this imperial ship but at the same time there's an explanation why there can be not many stormtroopers or you would find a bunch of them or they're panicked and running around and uh, and it's the, really good game. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. A very uh, sort of um, a die hard also uh, <laughs> mood to it. There has been an awakening. Have you felt it? We are just out of the the Force Awaken at the BFI IMAX. I got a, a few. People in front of me, very excited. What's your name? Uh, Roberto. Roberto. I'm Hannah. Anthony. And and someone is hiding behind there. <laughs> we we won't bother. So the Force Awakens. What did you think, Roberto? Um, wow, well, um, I really enjoyed it. Um, it had loads of amazing moments and was harking back to the original trilogy and there were a lot of nice touches and. But there were feelings as well. It wasn't just action, so it was great. I really liked it. So, so a lot of people are crying in there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but laughing as well. You're laughing Smiling. as well. Yeah, there's loads of different feelings. Yeah. No, it's really good. Really great. I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to watch it again. Cool. And you had a more mitigated opinion. So uh, what's your name again? Uh, Anthony. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed it. I think... I think he's right as well. Obviously, touched the strings, and there were a couple of moments that heart back to the old trilogy. You can help, but kind of choke yourself up. But I, I thought it was a bit rushed. I think they wanted to get out of the way and set the characters for the next for the next phase. Um, and there are kind of a little bit of weak plot holes. I thought that they just. I guess that's probably hard back to the old trilogy as well, because obviously there were plot holes there and stuff. But I think yeah, it's really enjoyable. I'll watch it. Definitely watch it again. Um, yeah. yeah, not maybe probably not Amazing Spider-Man 2, but a bit of preparation for yeah. what's coming next, and yeah. uh, they yeah, might yeah. be freer yeah. for for the next one. What about you? I thought it was excellent. I really enjoyed it. I cried twice, um, <laughs> and I really feel that um, any future films are in very safe hands. Um, I think he handled things very deftly, and yes, he did have a job to do in sort of moving the plot on, but I don't think he. I mean, going back to the original trilogy, I think that that, that was sort of ooh, a bit clumsy and clunky dialogue, and I still, I still think it had some of that, but I think he managed to make me sad in a way yeah. that the original trilogy didn't accept at Empire Strikes Back. I think it was better than Return of the Jedi. Yeah. I'm not sure about the other two, but like, I thought it was a brilliant film, and I really, um, really enjoyed watching it. Or, oh, kind of for me to have an idea, how much are you a fans of Star Wars? <laughs> well, I think, personally, I'm a, a good fan. Got quite a bit of merchandise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got all the merchandise. Yeah. yeah, I'm not like, obsessed, but it is one of those films I've seen several times and, yeah, since I was little and I've been watching it constantly and regularly. I think we've, I've seen Empire Strikes Back two or three times this year. So. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, little question... If I say something called Expanded Universe, does it ring a bell to you? Yeah, I've read a couple of books, but I haven't really invested much. I just prefer to stick to them. Okay, the, yeah. the canon, the yeah, official the canon, canon. Exactly, the official canon. I don't agree with that <laughs> Expanded Universe is canon. Anyway, okay, great. Uh, thank you so much to, to the three of you and you behind. Uh, yes, this was a big deal for me, much more than I expected. Uh, when the first yellow scripts came coming down the screen, I think I started sobbing, to be honest. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought it was wonderful. Um, I, I really loved how the story unfolded, how you get to know the characters before. I really liked that the stormtrooper, I thought in the beginning he was like infiltrating, but no, he's someone who's choosing the good side. I love how they 
the runaway and they go in a scrap and it's the Millennium Falcon that that got me teared up again and how when they go into space that's how they meet Han Solo and Chewie that got me teared, teared, teared up again as well the the galaxy is extremely small though <laughs> well apparently uh, and then Han Solo and Leia meeting up started crying again yeah it was just a very roller coaster emotional movie for me it was um it was really nice and okay just the only thing that kind of found disappointing is that it really had to be a dead star again it's just i mean haven't we done this like two times before i mean the bad guys too really don't have any more original ideas it's not a death star it's something much bigger <laughs> which collects the the power of the sun <laughs> still and apparently it can still be disactivated like a two other times so i mean the engineers are really bad in the world of star wars <laughs> so you always say and you just said five minutes ago when i forgot to push the record button that i am asking the wrong question so what would be your question to me what did you think of it what did I think of it? I really, really liked it. Well, since I recorded mostly positive feedbacks, I'm going to be a bit negative. But but I, I, I insist that I really in, thoroughly enjoyed it and almost cried. Also, I think it was a bit heavy-ended, a bit bonk-bonk on the head. The galaxy is extremely small. You keep running into people, you know, very fast with no purpose. But I think it... Okay, I accept that it's in the universe, it's the way of the force. You run into people, you are supposed to run into a lot of jokes, most of them very good, a few not so good, but that's all right. You, 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 that's the kind of movie you can forgive a lot to uh, instead of keep a blame about that like you, you would with other movies. You, you, you could forgive a lot and in the end it was working. A, a bit heavy ended, but they, they had to do that, I think. So now they can have other movies which will be more free, more confident uh, to go into uh, new places. Definitely, yes. I really liked Ray and Finn, who were great, and Poe. Um, I thought they were really great characters that you wanted to explore more. So about those guys, I thought that was, of all the Star Wars, we rewatch Return of the Jedi and the others, and I thought that these movies definitely got something role-playing games in them. A lot of critical failures and missing, yeah. missed actions. I thought this one was the most role-playing game of them all in one way. The, but the, the characters got such big stats in everything, like uh, flying an uh, X-Wing. Uh, <laughs> Poe is really a great pilot. Well, he's the greatest pilot, apparently. <laughs> of so, the resistance. Yes. By the way, the, the Republic seems to be very badly protected. <laughs> also. <laughs> I was like, what? That's it? <laughs> <laughs> Big cities with huge skyscrapers and they just like, oh. Wait, wait is that Coruscant? <laughs> What's that Coruscant? Are they dead? Uh, I guess. Anyway. No, I think it was, it was, it hit the spot for me. It, it was the thing I was waiting for. And I'm excited to see what's going to unfold in the rest. Okay, let's see. Next one will be Rogue One. Not even part of the tri trilogy. So apparently it's going to tell the story or I think all, all the plans of the Death Star were collected. I don't know if it's still the case. Anyway, so uh, yeah, good one. Uh -oh. Go see it. What do you think of Adam Driver? Who's Adam Driver? <laughs> he's um. Uh, is he a pilot? Is he a stormtrooper? <laughs> he's the Han Solo kid. Okay, uh, Kylo Ren. Yeah, Kylo okay. Ren. I really liked him. Because he's like the new bad guy on the block. What do you mean the new bad guy on the block? He's Darth Vader. Oh. Yeah, but I like always like in the shadow of his grandfather, and he's really got uh, issues with that. He's really insecure and not happy. <laughs> and I, I understand why he has to wear a mask as well, because he doesn't look really commanding without it. Looks cute. <laughs> I thought Domshaw was really good as uh, what was his name? Uh, Flux? Fox? Who's that again? <laughs> This is the one from back in time and the Harry Potter movies. 
Yeah, yeah, no, but in the movie, who was he? He was the second, uh, the one always reporting to uh, Snock or I don't know. Sno- smoke. Yeah, Snoke. To Felicity Smoke. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's in Harrow. But uh, as if you try, every time they would say smoke, I was picturing Felicity, Felicity Smoke. The, the pseudo talking. It was a bit out there on the scale of, I think I'm Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I mean, he went there with his, and we're gonna win! We hate them! Why? We don't know! <laughs> but we hate them! Yeah, yeah, no. Um, okay. General Hux, Dumshall Gleason. Is it related to Father Gleason? No. no. The guy who was in, in Bruges? I don't think so. This, this p- post okay. thing is getting out of control. Okay, thanks back with Gary and James. And uh, let me know what you think uh, of the movie. Bye. Bye. section the what are we reading what are we going to read but we're going to make it a little special and star wars flavored have you been reading anything sort of recently or not so recently star wars related or seen a show or podcast or whatever i would recommend anyone who wanted to go see this the uh, new film have a read of the throne trilogy if you've not read it yeah it's a very good book written by timothy Zahn. I first read it as a kid, and that really helped get me into the Star Wars expanded universe. It's probably if you read any book about Star Wars, that's probably the most canon yeah. you can find it was, out there. It was, it was written at the bequest of George Lucas, using the stuff from D6 to actually flesh out the universe to actually be the next film, but that never happened. There's a, it's a bit frustrating, there's a decent comics which was made out of it, Actually yeah. drawn by a French drafter, but so the the first book, The Air of the Empire, has got a, a nice comics version by uh, Vincent Coipel, which moved to Marvel anyway. But for the next book, they move to other drafters, like they do mm. sometimes with comics, so it's a bit disappointing. But yeah, the the books are definitely great, and there's a lot of characters there, which I think a lot of Star Wars fans are wondering what happened to them. Are they mm. are they going to be there in some fashion? Some uh, ginger. Uh, dark side oriented person for yeah. instance Gary's rolling his eyes like what are we talking about you're going to <laughs> well <laughs> over my head now already <laughs> Gary have you ever read anything you really like or seen anything besides the movies themselves uh, that you would recommend related to Star Wars yeah in some fashion doesn't have to be Star Wars maybe it's something that makes you think about Star Wars maybe it's Josh Rickers in love I don't know <laughs> That's a no answer. That's a no. Um, so edit that bit out. <laughs> I already mentioned in previous episode the one of the last book I, I finished is Five Hundred and First by Karen Travis, which actually made me like a bit the prequel because it was putting a lot of flesh around mm. the the clones and the, the the Mandalorians. Also, it was quite interesting, and I was looking forward to read the sequels to Five Hundred and First. But actually got lost in the way of the TV shows, etc. They just cancelled the sequel to that. So basically, it's it's about Mandalorians, a guy from Mandaloria collecting clones and giving them a, a home purpose. and a way of life, a purpose. It's quite interesting the way it depicts Jedi and the Jedi Council like people bad for everyone. So it's it's an interesting point of view uh, on the on the whole thing. But no sequel. The whole Disney way they've actually done things, they've got to be very, very careful because they've put an end to a lot of things there. And as you can see, the expanded universe has played a lot into it. You know, there's been your, your loyal fan base in the expanded universe. So you've got to be very careful with um, how they play this to the future. I think it would be all right. Already the expanded universe, not everything was consistent. A lot of things you would yeah. cherry pick what you like or not. Like even the games, I think it's. Uh, what's the one with uh, Dark Vader, Apprentice, and... Force Unleashed. Yeah, Force Unleashed. 
I mean, these are the sort of thing I would not consider in my universe if I, I did a, a game. So you, you sort of cherry-picked all of that like, in, in the I end. Think, I think they, they, they have kind of actually the, the oddest, but the most successful expanded universe. Mm. Because everything has to go through a particular company to actually make sure it's canon. They actually had like levels of canon. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that there was um, first of all at the very top, it was everything George Lucas said. That was that was it. Whatever he was in his mind, that was true. And then you had the the next one. Then you had like television canon, which like Star Wars Clone, Star Wars New Republic. Which is already stuff I would consider canon. Yeah. Well, so well, then, not but canon, but... I've, I've got a question on all of this yeah. from your letters. Where was he going when he did the Christmas special Star Wars? Yeah, he's actually written that he regretted that. <laughs> because <laughs> does that fit in the storyline? or no, it, well, it, it, was, it, was kind of, it kind of was, but it wasn't. But I think the, the, what I was actually saying with regards to um, that the, the, there's layers of canon is the popular one works. And that sounds a very odd thing, but they have actually retconned certain things within their, the Italian mm-hmm. universe because certain things have become popular. And, you know, a game may come out and only a few people play the game, so they don't really care that it contradicts something. And they kind of say, no, 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 that's, this other level of canon is higher than that one, that so it sense. overwrites it. But most of the time, they will actually go, right, okay, it's really, really popular. They'll try and retcon it and make it, you know, play it into it. Like, for example, the classic one which they turn around and say is from the films and actually say is like, you know, I can make the Kessel running like, what was it, so many parsecs? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, in one point parsecs or something. And people have turned around and actually played, argued over that for so many times. Like you say, the parsecs are unit of distance, not time. And you go, well, technically, he, he, he would be doing one of two things. One, he could just be cocky and trying to, you know, fast talk someone who doesn't know. Mm-hmm. Or two, if you've got in space and you've got lots of obstructions around the place, if you're showing how good your pilot you are, you could go round the long way to that place, or you could go the most direct route, which is through the most hazardous. Yeah. So you could say, I'm such a good pilot, I can get there in the shortest distance. Yeah, no, no that's, I read that, that you, you would go around Kessel uh, and the, the, the parsecs are actually the radius from, from Kessel and the, yeah. the tighter you are. The best you are, so, so and the yeah. faster your ship is because it needs to to handle the. So that's one way. That. So they, they they may turned a a comment that George perhaps George Lucas got wrong initially and writing it out not knowing enough about space that he's now turned it into actually yeah actually that was what we read and the the yeah, the, the that trilogy is probably up there in those uh, canon at least it was until Force Awakens. Actually, what I'm gonna read, I'm gonna reread something which is uh, probably not as high in the canon, but I got a good memory of it, although it was not all good. Which is the uh, the four trilogy. So you got the prequel, the first, you got the second, which are the, the original movies. You got the third, which is a Zan trilogy, and the sort of four trilogy is uh, Dark Empire, mm. which was a, a comic, which was telling the the story about. All after that, so I quite like the story. Uh, a lot of, uh, I think that, that's the first time I heard about a place called Narshada, which is sort yeah. of a gritty, coruscant, multi-layered, very uh, rough place. The, the visual style is quite changing a bit. Uh, I would understand people don't like it. It starts with very artistic, then they change again the drafter and it goes a bit downhill. It was a Dark Horse comic. Yes. After it's been to Marvel and before it came back now to Marvel since it's all under Disney. So the Dark Empire Dark Horse Comics was by Tom Veitch. I found out today that the drafter was Cam Kennedy Scott and the second not so good drafter, or maybe it was the inker, no, it's fault. Uh, Gene Brickey is, is British. And uh, Cam Kennedy worked on Judge Dredd. So actually, visually, it's a bit like Judge Dreddy. But there, there's great yeah. scenes with, with Boba Fett there. On one hand, doing really badass thing against Sith and on the other end being what in French we call uh, Johnny Padball, Johnny Low Luck, because every time he's in the vicinity of Han Solo for some reason he, he becomes uh, very unlucky and mm. terrible uh, bounty hunter. Anything you're looking forward to see beside the movie? I'm really looking forward to see the, the Rebels one they're actually going to be doing. I'm looking forward to seeing The uh, Rogue One. Yeah. That, that I, I'm actually kind of more interested in Rogue yeah. One than the new uh, Star Wars one because on one side of it you've got the what is it space wizards 
<laughs> yeah, the, uh, the, 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 the <coughs> people doing the grittiness of it, the 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 under elements, and actually it would be really interesting to see because the story is going to be it's going to be a three part of film that's going to be like bunny bunny hopping over. Oh, the it's other one. three parters. Yeah. I mean, actually they were doing three one shots. I didn't knew Rogue One was a three parter. Uh, I th- well. Uh, I think there's a Boba Fett movie, a Han Solo movie, and Rogue One. I don't think there's three. Oh, Rogue I, I, thought, I thought there was. But the Rogue One, Rogue One is going to be telling the story of the captured uh, Death Star plans before you actually see. The, the oh, the time that storyline, yeah, yeah. And that'd be really interesting to see. I, them do and that. I like just the picture of the show because it looks like a group of yeah. role play characters. Again, the prequels. My issue with that was Jedi, Jedi, Jedi. I, that's not the most exciting. You you look the first Star Wars. You see Obi Wan gonna be doing a few things in the back, but otherwise it's mostly about guys without powers uh, doing whatever like you would do in most tabletop RPG. We we did not even discuss the fact that personally the fewer Jedi involved around the table, the the best it is. Uh, I would not allow my player to be one, or they would have a very 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 difficult. Star time. Wars, uh, the Force <coughs> of Destiny, they've actually done a very good way of actually power balancing it between the the, the Jedi and the, the players, you could be just as skilled as a Jedi, but being a Jedi gives you more options. Okay. It gives you the ability to go, I'm not a great shooter, but I can be an okay shooter. GMs are always a bit funny about that, I found. You know, they, they don't like people playing Jedis. And I don't actually find a lot of people play them either, to be honest. Or you are in the setting where it's yeah. all Jedis. And... I I, the, 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 the Force of Destiny book is the one about Jedis. That's pretty much it. But because they've actually done their, all their books together and to actually complement each other, they, some of their adventures can be for any group. You can basically go, right, you're a Force and Destiny character, and basically you've got you know, some of these abilities, but you can actually you be with a group that isn't. Mm-hmm. So it actually allows you a lot more player movement there. And it's not going to be the, oh, well, he's got a lightsaber, so therefore he's great. You know, you can be just as dangerous with a, with a cannon. Actually, it reminds me, I'm not sure if anyone remembers, playing Star Wars Galaxy. Played that right from the beginning, and they never let anyone play uh, Jedi in that, and you had to find the holocrons. Well, except your, it's, well... <laughs> to unlock it, almost. <laughs> but, okay, let the Star Wars Galaxy, I played it, and it's a very interesting story, because there's a story about what people need, it's not what people want. Because it started, you could be a Jedi and become one only randomly. And it was very difficult, and once you were a Jedi, from what I remember, if you died, your character, which is in MMORPG, can open quite a bit, you would lose all your Jedi stuff, and you have to revert back. Then people complain about that, that it was random, so they made a very difficult thing, the whole path thing. to do it, and there were more then. And also part of what I found exciting on day one about the game was this idea, okay, if you're going to be a Jedi, you're going to have an awful lot of other players with the bounty on your head and they're going to come after you it will be tough for you that's but, what I was leading to to on this because if you do the PvP sort of side to it we go into the PvP area of this game it was literally you have this massive group of army on one side the other on the other side and they're coming close together and as soon as the lightsaber came out from one of the players go, Jedi and about a second later he's dead <laughs> it was literally as soon as the lightsaber came out bang he's what? dead because everyone just locked straight onto him and thinking but, Wow, a game needs to be unlucky to be a Jedi. But the, Geek the, the, mage. <laughs> yeah, but the, the thing is that they're losing the, 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 the way to get Jedi more and more to the point where it, it, I'm not saying it was easy, but it was, I don't know, like being epic in World of Warcraft, which is, you still probably have hundreds of people or thousands of people, in it, which are. And the day we stopped playing that game with my brother was the day where there was a server failure and you could not hide if you were a Jedi or not anymore. And you were in a special port, and there would be like 30 Jedi in the area around you. And you're like, you know, this is original movie setting. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, it, they had critical failures at the yeah. end of that. But then, then you go to the new Star Wars game they've done. And I didn't play it that much, mm. but I did go on to the tests, uh, beta. And uh, it was just literally every other person was a Jedi in it. Everyone just, wants to be the hero. Yeah, Everyone wants to be the Jedi. Yeah, it's just, so I understand why you, need, you do need the balance, and it's it's kind of nice that when you're in a role playing game, at least it's a little bit different. You know, everyone always wants to be a Jedi. But at the same time, it's nice because you want to give that flexibility for people to be able to play it. I think they've, they've done that in the fantasy flight game. They've actually, yeah. they actually been able to do that. They've, they've made it so that Jedi's 
you can have all the powers and stuff like that. You can like be persuasive. But you may not have any of the skill. You can hide from someone. You can make. Like, Basically, it gives you more options, but it doesn't make you an expert because you spent have to broaden your XP out. But one of the the elements is that you know they kind of explained it away. Wanted to do a little bit more explain the way how you can actually become a Jedi later on. Look at just, uh, New Hope. Darth Vader meets his own daughter and doesn't realise that she's a Jedi or got got the Force in her. And that's where they basically the whole the, the, the you know we're talking about it behind the scenes and basically everything like that is that in the Star Wars universe everything has the Force in it. Yeah, it's your ability to control it. That allows you to see how whether you're trained. So he walks up to her and goes, "Right, yeah, you've got the force in you. You've got quite a lot of it. Yeah, because but you're not using it because you're you're someone strong. And if in the Star Wars universe, if you're strong, whatever that means, mentally, uh, mentally, etc., you've got the force with you to some extent. You're lucky. You're you're good. Yeah, like like Han Luke, Solo. Yeah, Han Solo or Luke when he's when Vader in the original movie in the New Hope is flying behind Luke, he's saying, "Oh, the the force is strong in this one." He's not saying, "Oh, this guy is a Jedi." He just says. Well, this guy got it. I think, he, I think he always senses. I mean, at least this is the way I see it. That he, he probably senses that she, uh, Prince Leia, has got the force, but it's just like she ain't using it. It's no point in mentioning. Well, he said he says it. Yeah, to it. He said uh, the, the way she resists to torture is extremely impressive. So in yeah. a way, that's it doesn't need to really mention it. Cause yeah. it like James said, well, not using the force. So it's like, it's like having the actual force, uh, like dice. Yeah. Whether or not you've got them locked into certain things. Force sensitive, isn't it? Yeah. So you're actually like activating your force powers. You can usually like sense that someone's actually got a, a force training when they actually start using their powers. It's got a lot of XP. Well, this NPC is quite strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, had a lot of XP over it's time. level six at least. <laughs> <laughs> I like that about the I mean, basically you, you can have that in there and basically just allow that right okay the player wants to actually become a Jedi now um, we'll, we'll work something into his backstory and then we'll make, move it along as opposed to well you're a wizard or, or you're a thief yeah and then if you want to become something else later you're now shooting yourself in the foot because of it yeah that's that's why I read this line with the concept of D20 system is that D6 and I guess Edge you can create very quickly a new template, something which is your own, which is not unbalanced compared to others, but which would be yours. You can create a space pirate or, or whatever, a former box champ- wrestling champion or whatever, and but it still works. And it's just someone who, for some reason, never used a blaster, but going to learn to use them. And, and, I, and pretty much that's it. I like that, actually, with regards to the system. In fact, it allows you a lot more real-world things. It's like, for example... Um, if, let's go back to D and D. You go right. Okay, you're playing a D and D character. You're a a rogue. That means you can't use long swords at all, <laughs> yeah. ever. So I can't. Just, there's a long sword on the side there, and I'd rather use my fists than pick it up. Yes. Okay then. Whereas in this game, you go. Okay, you're not trained in that, so you're going to be bad. But you've got a chance. Well, is it, you've got a better chance than with nothing. Or... Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's, it gives you, it gives you the element. And some of the things they've actually do in this new system is they've actually got skins called, um, like talent trees mm. that you can buy into any, any of them. It just costs you XP. So you can basically go, I want to be a bit, you know, bit piloty, bit, bit this. But by having some of those talents, it actually makes you really, really good. Mm. For example, one of the simplest ones is if you want to be a fighty character, by Viner's talent is, okay, if on a critical role, I know whatever the critical role is, percentile, because I've got this talent, it costs me 10 XP, plus 10 to it. So you're helping your character out by having that. Now, while someone is not a fighter and not on that tree, they may get the same chance on a critical role Mm -hmm. as you, but they're not as good as you because you've got that talent. Sadly, I think we need to uh, wrap up this one. Um, so that was the release podcast again with Gary and James. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, uh, again, leave us your comments. Twitter, just Google Rollist Pod, and you will find us on Twitter, Facebook, uh, WordPress, uh, Rollist Pod, Rollist with an S. And uh, leave us a comment and let us know what's your your best uh, Star Wars stories and uh, what's your favorite game system. And uh, in the meantime, have good games. <laughs> have good games. Two D two dance like a horse by Ergo Fismis. Mr. Vader wants to see you in his office by Three Irma and Louise. And of course, Solta or Franco by Bondedoro or Team Song. 
All songs available for free on freemusicarchive.org. Alegria da moçada da perua, favelada, nosso som é fantasia pra mamãe, vovó, titia. Rolê, 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 solta o frango e vem com a gente. Rolê, 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 solta o frango e vem com a gente. Nós é tipo bem Jesus, todo mundo a gente ama, ainda mais se for gatinha, rola até levar pra cama. A gente topa tudo, sapatão e bigode tudo na hora do piriri Cai em mim ou travesti Vai, Batuque! Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente Rolê! 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 Solta o frango e vem com a gente Sorry, it's just I see time and I really want us to record the... It's okay. I need the taller. I need it. And also that. I think there's a couple of moments on there where we kind of went. That's difficult. Yeah, I think, were... I think if you basically got you, went, you guys went far too geeky for me to even get there. Yeah, on Star it's Wars also, one. you know, there's a one about role playing game, and there's going to be so much ma Star Wars material out there. So, but I think it's a really good one. Yeah, so, yeah. if you're in Star Wars, I mean, as a listener, I really enjoy that. 